I thought I'd redo part of this, because I had said um, what I was about to say now in this video, but it didn't come out the best. Also, I wasn't killing anything in the background, so I think it was rather poor in that. So I guess to start it off, so um, today, when I logged on to the game, and I went to join, I found out that um, I'd been guilt kicked. And I was like, that's weird. I mean, I, I, I seem to be in good standing with the guild. I didn't really have any arguments with anyone. But when I logged in today, I was guild tech, so I was trying to figure out what the hell was going on. So I was in a guild that was initially named uh, Comp of Honor, which is kind of a mature name. It's, uh, you know, it was like a gimmick to try to get members, but I thought it was pretty funny. I'm like, ha ha ha, it's, you know, it's funny. It's immature, but it's funny. So, um, long story short, the, uh, you know, it didn't go over very well. It, uh, the guild ended up getting, um, whatchamacallit, they ended up, uh, you know, they ended up censoring the guild, and, uh, we were named RXKB something, so we dropped from about 120 members to about 90. And then, uh, over the next two weeks, it dropped from 90 to 60. So the guild's like a dying guild, don't get me wrong, so. But, um, so I joined that dying guild, and, um, I joined it actually the first night Bigel's Park was open, so this is the literally the first day. Um, so that's why it's, you know, it's different in places. Um, but basically, I logged in today, and I was no longer part of it. I was like, why am I no longer part of the guild? And I think this is a very good allegory for a whole kind of, you know, a way of life, I would have to say. So, what had happened was, um, I had actually played with a priest in my guild. And I don't know the priest's name, it's not... I mean, the priest's name is really relevant here. What's relevant is kind of like the overall lesson to be taken from it. So the overall lesson from this whole thing is that I have this, um... I have these hypnotic blades. And I had, uh, upgraded two hypnotic blades. I had been waiting for a while. I had this, uh, relatively shitty item. It was a... let me see if I can get it out. I need to press the right button. I had a Deadly Curse of Strength. So this Deadly Curse of Strength had 18.9 damage and per second, and is 6 strength overall. And my uh, Hypnotic Blade that I had won, it was the offhand, was 26.8. So, um, you know, it's a whole increase of about 10 damage per second, or it looks like 8 damage per second, which is, you know, pretty good. Um, now, get me wrong, there is a loss of strength, but strength adds to DPS, right? and there's not a significant increase from it. Like, my, my current attack power is 389, and, um, oh yeah, I forgot it won't work while this thing's up. So basically, um, 389 attack power only has 27 damage. So, you can take it that 300 attack power is about 28, 29, something like that. So, 8, atta eight actual damage is worth probably something like maybe 30 attack power. And so I on a need roll and the other priest the priest did a need roll and the priest um ended up losing and he's 34 so it's like um you know he, this is his first time running the dungeon i run it a number of times so the guy ended up having a fit and told me that it was a bastard and like you know sort of freaking out on me and the whole deal behind that was that he wanted this hypnotic play that i won and i equipped and uh he didn't have it so he kind of threw a bit of a temper tantrum and he petitioned the guild leader to kick me off. Now I was meeting with a client, I had to meet with the client after and I had logged out. And they knew all of this, I told them and I logged out to go meet with them. So, um, but I ended up, uh, you know, I logged out and I found another, um, you know, I, I logged in now, I'm a guild list, I'm like, what the heck happened? So I found another guild really quickly. Like, uh, you know, it's, it's not very hard to do. Like, uh, if you're in the World of Warcraft, there's always another guild. It's just a matter of, um, you know, is it worth sticking around? Um, and I think this is a very good allegory for a lot of things in life. This is a very good example of many things. And I think it's a good example of the spot where you get to choose how to live. And I think that's very important. So what happened from here was that, um, you know, I ended up, uh, when I log in, I'm like, what the heck? Why did I get kicked? And I found out the whole story from one of my guildmates. I'm like, hey, so you were kicked because this guy told the leader dude that you were a ninja. And I'm like, okay, so this one random guy tells him that I ninja'd something, and when I'm gone, they kick me? And he's like, yeah, pretty much. So, I mean, it doesn't seem very 
good management style to just randomly kick people for allegations, but that's probably why they have only 60 members. Um, you know, because we literally have as many members, we have more members online in the new guild that I'm in than they have in total. Which, you know, it's uh, very indicative of, you know, why the guild is failing versus that. And I think you start to see some some constants in life when you start looking at stuff this way. You start seeing that, hey, look, like, um, like in terms of companies, too, it's the same way. You might have the companies that mistreat their employees and then they're upset when their employees leave or when they can't retain good talent. And I think in many cases you have um, kind of like cesspools of people, too. Like, there's a reason why certain companies succeed and others fail. Like, at my present position, I was actually, um, you know, I had a bunch of just, just middle-aged chicks that would just kind of cause me issues. And I'm 30, so I'm like, you know, I'm getting up there. But these are, like, ones in their uh, late 40s and the others in their 30s, and they just cause drama. So I'm the third marketing manager that I know of there. And each of us have lasted a year and a half. Now, I'm leaving of my own accord because I have better offers available to me. But, uh, like, more money, aka. But um, they actually, she actually left... Um, because um, I think my, my predecessor left, she was fired. Like, I guess she freaked out and, like, broke someone's thing or something. And her predecessor also had a temper tantrum and left. So, you know, I'm, I'm pretty cool headed, so I don't really have that, um, you know, issue as much. I have a very long fuse. So, when it breaks up, then you have some issues. But I would say it's very limited in terms of how much it affects uh, life. But uh, the long story short is that, um, you know, um, so at my current job, it's the same way. Like, I'm at this job, and uh, I complained about them. And now, the problem is the whole work kind of relies on this one chick. She has very useful skills, but she causes a ton of drama. She's very quiet about it, very secretive. And the other problem is she's um, African-American, which means that she can get away with a whole lot more. Because... If she's fired, they can, she can say that it's because she was African-American. So it's like, she, she does good at her job, too. It's just she causes a lot of drama. So it's like, uh, but she's very secretive about it. So collecting information is hard. But it's kind of like that one dude. Like, there are certain people that are going to cause drama. But what I've noticed is there's a heavier collection at certain places than others. I think every place has a jerk or two. But I think some places are more likely to gather them, and it's based on the culture of that place. Like, if you're in a place that has a lot of jerks, then chances are you're in a place that's maybe not so great for you. Um, so what I've learned, at least from a lot of this stuff, is that uh, it's worthwhile to assess where you are, and then based upon your assessment, potentially move on. Um, and it's like for my current job. Like... Um, I ended up getting harassed by these people, and they just day in, day out, they'd like ask me kind of inappropriate questions, and if I gave them any answer, or if I even spoke to someone else, they'd often, you know, take my conversations and twist my words and try to turn it into something it wasn't, and try to, you know, really start a problem. So, I think there's always people like that, it's kind of like you have these little sociopaths lurking in the corners of life, but... The big thing that you can learn from it all is that, um, you know, they they tend to survive in certain environments and then be kind of rooted out in other ones. So I think a uh, little bit of information I've learned is that you limit the information you give to people, number one, too. Like, if you give people ammo, people there are certain people that will use ammo, even if you haven't done anything, just because they like the drama. And number two, I think that there's, um, you know, there's just, um, it, it's very good to, uh, I wouldn't say keep a low profile, but I say like, uh, you know, just remember, like, even if you're in a bad situation, and even if you're kind of pushed out of something, like I was with this guild, often, it, if you're pushed out of a guild, or even a workplace for an unfair reason, chances are there's something better out there. Like, you're, you're, I mean, don't be wrong, sometimes there is some temporary setback suffered from it, but it's often, like, a good thing. Like, I ended up, for my current job, I ended up getting pushed to 1099 because my boss, like, can't afford to fire me. He's going to be screwed when I leave. Like, we're trying to mitigate it. I'm trying to help him so he's not totally screwed and at least 
doing some basic training to like almost like an associate level uh, person on it. But the fact of the matter is, he's going to be royally screwed when I leave. Like he's not—he doesn't have a tech person, he doesn't have an IT person, he doesn't have a digital marketing associate, no digital marketing manager. So it's like he's definitely going to lose money. I feel bad about it, but I mean, he chose to uh, put me in 1099, which cost me to pay less instead of handling the problem appropriately. So he, he created the environment that caused me. I understand, dude, 71. So it's like you don't necessarily want to uh, do that, but. You know, but I ended up getting a much better offer. I got an offer for, uh, you know, 65 plus bonuses and heavy, uh, you know, heavy, uh, what's the word for it? Heavy, um, incentives. Like, you know, you have, uh, what are they called? Benefits. Like health insurance, all that. And obviously, the health insurance, other stuff, often add up to be like twenty, thirty thousand dollars 30000 that kind of stuff. So. And in the modern day and age, you don't want to be without health insurance, you can avoid it. So, I would say that there's there's always another opportunity, and it's just a matter of um, finding your way into the right place. And that uh, if you're in a place that is a pretty bad environment, you can always move onward and find a better one. That's what I'd have to say about it. Guild's life and the whole kind of cup of tea, it's a very similar thing throughout. And it's not something worth getting mad over, because did I get kicked out of a shitty guild? Yeah. Was I totally innocent? Yeah. Doesn't matter. No, because I found a better guild. Just like when I get kicked out of, oh, I didn't get kicked out of my workplace, but they, they punished me for allegations made by a sociopath. And now her computer is still breaking every day, even though I'm not on site. It's just, it's, you know, it becomes very apparent quickly once you isolate the person from the problem that the problem's elsewhere. And the people who make these kind of allegations and cause this kind of drama usually have something going pretty wrong in their life that causes them to do it. So it's, it's a result of the in the first place. So there's not really a point in trying to. You know, there's not a point in diving into suffering yourself, like, uh, to deal with that. Like, uh, if that makes no sense at all. Like, it's not worth the hate, it's not worth the anxiety that will cause you to retaliate. Like, uh, I heard that they say, there's an old saying that, um, don't ever take revenge unless you have two coffins. That, um, you know, it's that revenge has its own weight to it, and holding that kind of hate inside of you isn't very fun. And I would say, if I remember when I was a kid and I played this game the first time, if I got kicked out of a guild for an unfair reason, I was upset about it. But honestly, I was thinking about me quitting that guild. It was kind of like, you know, it was just... I kind of had that vibe from it that it was a dead guild, so it was like, you know... I think the lack of emotion is part maturity, but I think it's also part, um, you know, just apathy. Like, you know, I don't care that much because I didn't really lose much. And I think the whole work thing was a little more upsetting because, you know, this is a source of income. But, I mean, I ended up much better off because of it. So it's like, it's funny how these things work out if it makes any sense. Anyway, best of luck to you.